migration here it's always about some kind of strife but what about the movement that happens every day for people to live how the desire to move because there's something else somewhere And the question is, what happens when the artist moves? We keep moving, and also our thoughts move, other people come in, and that's how we move from here to where. There were questions about migration and in the beginning we were very skeptical about it because it's a very trendy thing. It's happened, there have been many exhib exhibitions on my art and migration and migrants, but they're usually framed in a certain way so we were really trying to avoid that. So. The change now started becoming the, the small things or the things that make us move. Like It's not small things, like money. We all have to move to find some work, maybe. So now from there, we started moving in other directions, from just it being about migration, but now migration being a door to other things. The theme of the exhibitions that are being made in the world right now, or it's the trending topic in the world right now, and to find your own maybe currency of vision or your own position within this discussion is very difficult. It's fast. All the information, all the material that has been produced, maybe in the last four or five years about movement and migrations, are so much that to pursue it in a honest and just a personal way is interrupted all the time. So one of our early arguments was if the word migration will be there in the, in the exhibition, in the exhibition text, in the title of the work. And our first title that we worked with was Artists as Migrants and it's changed now to from here to when and continues to change for us to other things it's become from here to now it becomes from once to here it's become at some point <laughs> from longinos to onyes or from gote institute to onyes as my geography always always imagined one day when we are stopping this curatorship practice, we shall do a show without artists and without any art, and it will be a show about contemporary art. So this is our third exhibition, and we feel we almost got there. So that has been the strangest thing, because the artists are in their studios, they are making the work, uh, you don't interfere with them, what they are making at all. But what you build is something we are calling the exhibition program. So you don't necessarily bother with what is being made, but you make something to support it around it. So that's new for us. You are always new, you are speaking to the artist every day, you know what they are making, and you are translating that. But we have been seeing the work being made in little bits only in the last few days. So we are not actually interpreting the work, but the theme of the exhibition. So the artists are working separately from the curators, but somehow there's a connection. Uh, and 
my geographia is currently maybe identifying as a, an artist curatorial collective and it's um, a drifting practice. It started as an exhibition that we did at Gota Institute in 2017 in which we were thinking about uh, movement and how we situate ourselves in this city. So Nigeria is to say we are doing it. We are making the geography of Nairobi ourselves. So it started from that exhibition where we were walking and moving around and making studies about the, the city. And then uh, as uh, gently morphed into other things. So last year was our first exhibition as a curatorial collective, which we, the exhibition and experiment was called Wanakuboeka Philharmonic, which was in ways for us thinking about what is a band, what is music, what is good music, what is music that sounds good and how do band, mem band members make good music together. So and then this this year we are working uh, with Onyes Martin and Longino Snagila on the exhibition From Here to When which is uh, for them, personal um, collections of memories, of dreams, of experiences, as they've moved, or as their family have moved, or as they've experienced movement. And I believe for Nigeria, it is for us ways in which we are expanding our practice uh, uh, by thinking alongside of being with other other people. So basically the process was, uh, we first identified the topic that we wanted to work on, which was uh, migration. Uh, so then we had to meet the curators, Nigeria, and basically what they were doing was uh, we were discussing and seeing how we want to do it, what, uh, what, how we want to do it, and what we want to do uh, in this case of uh, the story of immigration, migration, sorry, and uh, so also trying to see uh, even specifically what we want to talk about in migration and then coming up with the title of the show. Uh, so then there was constant meeting of what we want uh, to do, uh, which materials we want to use, uh, uh, the dates of the exhibition. So basically it's everything that happens in planning the exhibition but then divided into two groups. So one was negotiating with Goten Institute, the other group was making the work. Uh, so basically uh, working with curators makes the work easier because you know like you only have to create the work and then uh, you know, somebody else is going to be writing text or uh, uh, like negotiating for you uh, on issues like the way exhibition is supposed to be uh, done or the things uh, I need. So basically it was, uh, it was more of uh, constantly juggling between ideas, uh, researching, uh, they sharing the text they have, uh, uh, we artists sharing what we have in mind. I think it's, it's, it's uh, to see the final work in the show, it's not more of me as an artist, but then the collaboration between uh, what uh, they've researched about or what they know and what I also researched about. So it's, it's more of coming in together, yeah, the editorial thing, because it's, it goes more on uh, how we research, uh, how we research what we want to talk about. Yeah, so it's more of the same. Uh, I I knew I knew what he was working for because uh, even him he, he hadn't seen my my work. But if but basically if you look if you look like we were speaking with Rose in the morning and I was mentioning shoes 
and then you see Longinos coming with sheep. So we are constantly thinking almost in one line, or we are constantly in one topic. Uh, he collected, uh, he collected, uh, uh, you know, when they make money, and uh, usually the, the farm burns money that they don't want to be in circulation. So Longinos also went and collected that. And if you look at my installation, it talks also about death. So if you, there's that similarity that's constantly coming up. And even when the works are changing, because initially I was not going to do, I was more of going to work with something to do with traps. And like even seeing the, my work changing into even uh, very simpler, uh, like, like the way I'm doing it, we, like memory. No, it changes from like physical object to just a thought. And even he, 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 he didn't know when my work was changing, so we, we had to constantly talk to each other sometimes. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> it's based on my own migration history, but also um, I'm constantly, so I'm constantly starting from my from my own memory, or from my own way of. Uh, they have seen, they have seen, uh, they have seen things around me, but then also borrowing from what I've seen others go through. So if I mix my experience with the experience of others, then I think that combination speaks for almost everyone. So. Uh the, exhi the exhibition comes as a result of, uh, because me and Onyis, we've been always, wa since, since we started working, we've been uh, interested in the theme of, of human movement you know, from one place to another and how that changes how we are seen and how we also see, see ourselves and how we see other, other people. But we have always looked at it from you know, very detached from very far, just uh, these artists in Kenya, Nairobi, looking at uh, migration between, uh, uh, between Africa and, and Europe through the Mediterranean. Something that people have questioned and said, uh, and asked, for example, asked me, but you don't come from the countries that are affected by by this 21st century kind of migration. And to me, it's it's simple because the first migration, the first Homo sapien migration, happened uh, started in East Africa. in the Great Rift Valley when the Homo sapiens decided to, to move towards north. And I look at that and I also look at migration from that, from that point, like why did Homo sapiens decide to, to move? What were the factors that pushed Homo sapiens to to leave their, the place where they had known as, as home, to move to other places. And to me, those reasons haven't changed. The reasons are still the same. It's only the routes and, and vessels of migration that, that have changed. But the reasons are still basic human survival. And that urge, human urge of looking for or chasing, chasing something, chasing dreams. Sometimes we find our dreams. Sometimes we discover that the earth is flat and we arrive at the end of the earth. And, but that's that's just that's a joke. But anyway, uh, so yeah. So this time we decided uh, we decided that 
it will be important to look at to look at this the idea of human movement from our own experience and how these experiences have come to shape whom we are and looking at that young little little child who grew up on a on a border town i don't think i am the same a lot of i have had a lot of influences so i would credit that to to that day when my mom had courage to put every one of us in the bus and, and came down in Nairobi. So that's basically what I'm looking at. And the kind of works that I'm presenting are not, are not very direct. Because I thought if I would present very direct work, then it will either be illustrating or uh, reporting. But I don't want to report, I don't want to illustrate. You know, I just want to create a narrative that is very open. I want to create very works that are open to, to interpretation. And so, with this I'm looking at an archaeological process where me as an artist puts myself in the shoes of, of an urban archaeologist who goes around collecting objects, some that are, some that are, are, are personal objects, some objects that are just found on, on the road, some objects that are found on the internet, and put them together to create, to create a presentation. Since some times back, I got interested in, uh, in reading Marx, Karl Marx, and Friedrich Engels, uh, the Communist Manifesto. And to me, the Communist Manifesto resonates a lot with, with the work that I'm going to present, because I'm also looking at the journey that we made. I mean, we didn't come here for social reasons. We came here for economic reasons, you know. And also because at that time, Nairobi had become a center of, of industrialization in, in Kenya. And Marx states that uh, once the bourgeoisie have, you know, have centralized industrialization in one area, it forces the population from the villages to trickle in and come to the center to offer, you know, to offer labor. So we also came, my, with my family, we came to offer labor. So we are part of that. We are part of that labor force. Uh, not too much. Um, it's, it's, it's hard to spell for many people or to write. But if you say automatic and put an N at the front, you got it. But where we got it from, from India, from this collective of three people like us, two guys and one girl. They, they say autonomous. So we borrowed it and made it into sharing somehow. Yeah, so this is ours, just like Nigeria, Wanakuboeka, because we have a writing practice also, and we try to break down language and invent new words. So this is one also. Um, the, the very simplest uh, description for an automat is a spaceship for the imagination. Spaceship is a house you enter and you eat there, you live there, you never come out and it travels for long, long, long time. Um, you, you can achieve many things. So. When you imagine a spaceship of the imagination, if you bring a few people into a room and you say, can you ride on my spaceship? For a time you've somehow enclosed them and the ideas don't go out of that room. So 
like you're flying in one spaceship for that moment you are inside an automat. So you don't enter physically. You say we are together in this thing for this time, moment. And for the imagination means ideas develop or you have an idea you want to kill, like this one, migration, and you say, hey, come to my notomant. It, is, it contains the ex exhibition framework, the thing that the curator is going to build for the exhibition for the artists. So we split it into four or five sessions that happen around the exhibition. Before, starting before the exhibition begins and going up to the end, even a few days after the exhibition, that's the last one. So it, in total it's five notomats. One has been done, one is the opening, one is the artist talk, one is closing the exhibition, and one is after the exhibition outside in the park. So some of them are off-site, they are not in the room there. So it is always something different happening. For instance, at the opening, it will be poetry. So it's an automat and it's about migration, but the person leading the automat says, let's start with reading some poems. Let's regard each other with eyes that smile, with faces that engage, save without urgency, the strangeness of being human. Thank you. The other one was, let's start with reading some magazine and some books just laid out and try to define what is this thing, migration. So the idea of migration keeps growing with each automat. The last one, we put it out in the public, like it's not us people who've gone to school or who go to exhibitions who should talk about migration or automats. Let's take it out in the streets. So. There's Bungala Wananchi at Yuanji Gardens where people throw a subject in the air and kill it. About 100 people, 50 people. So we shall go and try not to mountain migration there. And also it shall be a way of bringing those people from the park, from the garden, from the street into the exhibition to see how these two artists see migration. Yeah. Nairobi means the place where I have spent my life but yet I don't know and I'm always there was one point I used to tell myself I know Nairobi meaning Kijana Mjanja I've been born in the city and as much as I know it I'm constantly reminded that I don't know it's a place that has given me language it gives me the ways of seeing, I don't know, I, when I go to another place, I carry Nairobi with me and my Nairobi outlook. So it shapes how I see things, how I speak. Um, but I also try and have, have a weird relationship, some tension that I don't want to just be Nairobi or to limit myself to Nairobi, but also circumstances are I've been in Nairobi. I could possibly count on my fingers how long I've been away from Nairobi. Yeah. <laughs> it started when I saw something on a website a couple of years ago about someone who'd written, you live in your city like a middle class tourist. And it felt like a challenge. And um, I was just like, how much of the city do I know? Or am I just a tourist in my own city? And from that time it became a conscious thing that I will walk the city as much as I can whenever I can. So yeah, I've been walking around Nairobi is something I have done and I do to this day as a way of just being in the city and not being in a matatu going by or in a car, but being in the place moving at a slower pace and seeing. Yes. Yeah, so. For me, Nairobi is like a is like a manufacturing company that that people arrive in the morning and then they go back home 
in the evening. So people are constantly waiting for holidays to go back. Like there's there's that. If you if you want to see migration in in in, in especially in Nairobi, you see it very evidently when there's usually holidays, and you see the bus stops are full and uh, people are going back or some are coming in. Basically, it's a daytime prison or a work work time prison. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't feel like my route is is specifically somewhere like it's it's not strong because I'm more of if I can connect to a space that space is home for that time so because what if my body is home and so I never left home <laughs> Nairobi. Hmm? Ah. Nairobi is where I have lived for the last 12 years and worked for maybe six years. So I think it's just like survival and livelihood for me. It's also my home for this time. Uh, so I have in no doubt experienced Nairobi maybe in a more expanded way since I started making the work my geography but it never stops like being like the place for living and working mostly there is like I think when I say it's the place I worked and lived and called home for 12 years Wait. That is especially Nairobi, and you should keep that in the... Nairobi is really the city I've lived in for the last 20 years, 25 years. When I left school, college, university, I came straight to Nairobi, because where I come from, you cannot finish school and go back home. You have seen to have failed. So Nairobi is a place of opportunity. So that was a promise. Even when you're in school, that's a promise that the best jobs are in Nairobi. And that's why I came. There was really no other place to go. And when I got there, there has really been no other place to go in Kenya or in Africa. So I'm somehow stuck. I have traveled from Nairobi to other countries, to Europe, to Uganda, I have gotten a doubt in the mind whether my love for Nairobi is genuine because maybe it's just because I've not been to another place I think Nairobi is fit for me. But if you move for the first time to another place, you get a switch in the mind and you think, oh, I'm, I'm like the person who only eats food that his mother cooked and has never eaten anything else and thinks his mother is the best. But try something else and you feel, oh, I've been cheated for such a long time. So Nairobi is a sublimo, ephemeral. It can disappear for me anytime. I can move on, I can go backwards, I can go frontwards. That's what I mean when I say it doesn't really mean anything to me. I don't have anything that attaches me to it. It's just a place I live and work and I can live somewhere else and work somewhere else. So. It's not really that special. It's only, yeah, I haven't looked elsewhere. But I know there's a million other places I could be. I've just been contained in a small-minded way. I've been cheating myself for many years, saying this is the best city in the world because it has rich, it has poor, it has dry, it has wet, it has moderate climate. So there was a time I actually thought, I think Nairobi has the best climate in the world because it's not too cold, it's not too hot, it's not too dry, it's not too wet. But I went to Kampala recently and thought Kampala is better than Nairobi. Then from Kampala I might go to Lagos and think, oh, I've been so stupid, yeah, cheating myself by not moving. Yeah. So. 
for me this migration exhibition is interesting because I'm one guy who doesn't move. In our text we say artists are restless and they want to go and go and go but I move a lot but I only move in this city. Yeah which is connected to my geography, its practice of drifting. You have never imagined that you can drift for my geography around Nairobi and step out of the boundary. It feels like falling off the planet because my geography is Nairobi. So I find it fits me very well because I never leave Nairobi. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.